so thankful that we get to partner with the North American Mission Board, uh, <clears throat> particularly at this time of the year through the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. I want to remind you that 100% of the money that you give to go towards the Annie Armstrong Easter offering goes to the field. It goes to the North American Mission Board. We don't keep a portion of it here. We don't uh, take out parts of it and, and send what we want to, but instead we send every dime that's given to that to the North American Mission Board to see things like this happen, to see families like we've seen uh, talking about in the videos this morning and also the videos last week. And so it's great to get to partner and to be able to see real life what's going on across our, uh, right here in our, in our continent, in our uh, part of the woods. We see a lot of times what, what's going on in third world countries and how things are not going well there. But friends, there are people right here in our own back doors who need the gospel and who need to hear about Jesus. And that's what the North American Mission Board is doing, and we're thankful to partner with them uh, in doing that. I tell you, this week has been an awesome week. We've got a lot of things going on. We've been able to do a lot of things. Our teenagers met back together uh, for the first time since before the pandemic. Uh, and let me tell you, those who may not know, our teenagers is our senior adult group. I, I had an opportunity to meet with a few of them this week just to kind of talk about going forward from here, what are we going to do? What is the program going to look like? When are we going to get to start going on trips again? And one of them said, well, maybe not everybody knows what teenager is. Maybe they think you're saying teenager, but we're actually saying key, K-E-E-N-ager, and that is our senior adult group here at the church. And let me tell you, before the pandemic, they were very, very, very active. And I have a sense that they are getting ready to be very, very active again uh, as they are going through that. They had a great group on Monday uh, at their meeting and had a, had a good time together, a fellowship then we got to see students here on Wednesday night, student and children, uh, just seeing our volunteers serve the Lord and, and minister to those children and students that were on campus. Uh, it was a great night. I got to be upstairs with students, and so that was a lot of fun. I always uh, value any opportunity that I get to be upstairs with our students. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, I served as a student pastor here uh, for about six years uh, seven years in that area before I became pastor here, and so it's always a joy and a privilege to be upstairs with our students uh, and get to see what's going on there. I'm thankful for our staff and what they're doing and how they're ministering across our campus uh, and the things that are happening uh, as we are strengthening relationships with God as church in the world right here in Cropwell and we're seeing that go out beyond this area and we're so thankful for what God's doing and in much anticipation about what God's going to continue to do here uh, at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. I'm so thankful that as the weeks progress and the vaccine is coming out there are more and more of you who are feeling comfortable coming back and it's so good to see you in person and not just see you right on the, the little uh, watching online. We're watching online with you. Uh, it's so good to be able to actually see you this morning. And so uh, if, as we continue in the Word of God this morning, we're going to be in the book of Acts. We're going to continue our study and our walk through the book of Acts as we've made it to Acts chapter 16. Uh, we took a break during the, the holidays uh, and then we kind of did another series and, and we've been back in Acts now for three or four weeks and uh, we're going to finish this thing up before long, I promise. We're going to have to take another break for Easter but we're going to come back and we're going to finish up the book of Acts. Now, I told you in the beginning that we were going to be talking about obstacle courses. And uh, that is something I would venture to say that most of us enjoy. Most of you like some kind of an obstacle course. If it's doing it physically or watching it on TV, American Ninja Warrior, some of those different, my kids love watching this show that's kind of an obstacle course called The Floor is Lava. How many of you ever seen that? Yeah, we have the game, The Floor is Lava, and we had some friends over last night after Ford's birthday party, and they wanted to get it out, and I was like, please don't get out all the pieces to this, and Amy's like, there's not that much, just let them play it, it'll calm them down, and so they played The Floor is Lava last night, but we all enjoy that obstacle course thing sometimes, that challenge, but there's obstacle courses in life sometimes that we're not so 
thrilled about. And we encounter those obstacles. And I want us to see one of those this morning uh, in our passage of Scripture. But before we get there, uh, I want to tell you about a story. I told you I had an obstacle course story. So this week was Ford's birthday. He turned four years old. I know you can't believe it. I can't believe it either. Time is flying by. But about a month and a half, maybe two months ago, we started looking. He wanted to have an inflatable at the church, and that's what he wanted for his birthday party. So we started looking at the inflatables, and he picks out this humongous inflatable that's an obstacle course. It's like, I think Miss Deborah told me last week, I think it was 19 feet tall and 72 feet long, and we were wondering if it was going to fit in the gym. All right, so that's what he picked out. So Amy and I start looking at it, and we realize that it's really big, and Ford's going to be four, and there's going to be some little kids there, and we're like, I just don't know that they can do this one. And so we steered him in a different direction. We steered him to do something different. Well, then last week, we show up at another birthday party, and guess what they had? (laughs) The big obstacle course, 19 feet tall, 72 feet long. And what's the first thing they did when they got out of the car? Yes, it's the obstacle course. And they jump on, and with no problem, they're at the top, and they're coming down, and they're going through it. And the next thing we know, they're at the end of the obstacle course. And I looked at Amy, and I said, we might have to change the inflatable that we get for the party because I think they can do this. Uh, And she said, well, let's wait because it's twice as much. So let's see if they get in the car and say, I can't wait to have that at my party next week. Praise the Lord, they didn't do that. We got a smaller inflatable yesterday, but obstacle courses, our kids love them, we love them, be it doing them or watching them. But again, sometimes we don't like the obstacles of life. And this morning, that's what I want us to see. In our text today, we're going to see that Paul and Silas were traveling back to the new church that Paul had begun and Paul and Barnabas started their ministry in. They were going to these churches to encourage and to strengthen them and and strengthen these new believers and to, to teach them and to lead them in the way that they needed to go. And they were started encountering some struggles and we've in, we've we've watched some of these struggles and so this morning we're going to look at those obstacles and if you have your bible and i hope you do and you've opened to the book of acts chapter 16 i'm going to begin reading in verse 1 and i'm going to read through verse 5 if you don't have a bible the words will be on the screen acts chapter 16 beginning in verse 1 paul came also to derby and to lystra A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in number daily. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for today, and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to dive into your word, God. God, that we have to learn from your word. Lord, that we can learn from examples of people who have lived life like we live life. God, in a different time, and a different day, but, Lord, still a life that we can connect with, God. And so, Lord, help us today in the balance of the time that we have left to learn from your word this morning. It's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray today. Amen. So with the time that we have left this morning, I want us to take a moment to look at this passage of Scripture a little more in depth and to see where it's talking about these obstacles and and potential obstacles that it exposes here that we may deal with in our own personal life. So in the beginning here... uh, we see that Paul and Silas or Paul and Silas have started their journey and it talks about them going to Derby and Lystra. Well, here's what I want us to understand. Why is that so important? Why would that have anything to do with an obstacle? We well, see that was the place that they started. Paul and Barnabas started their ministry there. They began in uh, 
it, it started off in Lystra because they were coming from a different direction. And so they started in Lystra and then went to Derby. But then on their way back, they came to Derby first and then to Lystra. And so they began their journey there by going back. Well, the obstacle that could be faced here is an obstacle of fear of our past pains. Now, we know from this passage of Scripture that Paul and Barnabas experienced some pain there. If you remember, the people of the city believed that Paul and Barnabas were Hermes and Zeus, and they wanted to worship them. They wanted to bow down to them. They wanted to treat them like they were gods. But then there were some Jews that were trying to destroy them. And they followed them to Lystra, and they turned the people against them. We learned earlier in our study that Paul was then dragged outside of the city, and they stoned him, not to death, but just to the verge of death. And they left him there. And we see here this morning that Paul's response was to go back there. Friends, Paul could have easily said, I've been there, I've done that. They beat me, they abused me, they didn't want to hear what I had to say. He could have listened to his past pain, to his previous pain, and not follow the guidance of the Lord to go back there. But instead, that's not what he did. It says, the text tells us this morning that Paul had to be concerned, maybe even fearful returning to Lystra, but he did it nonetheless. He had no idea what was going to happen. Because remember, when he had left there before, he had been stoned and been left for dead. But he also knew that God was doing something there and that God was sending him there for a reason. And so I want to ask you this morning, are our past pains obstacles in our life? Are the things that we've dealt with in our past, or our, our pains, maybe it's a loss of a job, maybe it's the way we were treated in school, maybe it's the way that our parents treated us, maybe it was the way that somebody looked at us or, or acted towards us in our past. Friends, are we letting our past pains stand in the way of what God's called us to do? Paul didn't do that, and I would encourage us to not do that either. I know in my life, I don't intentionally want to go back and revisit situations, but sometimes there's a, a need to do that. There's a need to go back and, and revisit some of the pains that I encountered in life so that I don't do them again, so that I don't interact in them again, so that I don't walk down the same path again. There are a lot of things in my family life that I'm not happy about, that I don't enjoy from my growing up time. And I tell Amy often, I'm not going to do this because this happened in my life growing up, and I want to provide better for my family than what was done for me. Now hear me say, I had a good childhood. I'm not saying that. But I went through divorce with my parents. That was a past pain. I don't want that to happen in my life. I'm, I'm not willing to let that happen. I'm, I'm going to do what it takes to make sure that doesn't happen in my life. I don't want my children to experience the same pain. However, our past pain should not keep us from living for Jesus. It shouldn't keep us from going and doing. Instead, it should spur us on with the experience that we've had to help others who are encountering the same struggles that we've encountered in our life. Friends, don't let your past pain stop you from future victories. Don't let our past pain stop us from future victories. If God leads you back through a tough place, trust Him. He has a reason for taking you there. So friends, this morning, one of the obstacles that we see here in Paul's life was he went back to somewhere that had caused him pain. And although he was fearful of it, he didn't allow it to keep him from doing what God had called him to do. Sometimes our obstacles can be a fear of past, past pains. The second thing is sometimes our obstacles can be family. Sometimes our obstacles can be family. You're like, what do you mean by that? Well, sometimes there's things that our family have done that we could present ourselves as obstacles. Friends, we don't always get to, well, in fact, we never get to choose who our family is unless we marry into it. They can make it or they can break it for us. Our family can make it very difficult. They can make times and situations difficult for us. We see here in this passage of Scripture that Paul and Silas have met Timothy and they want to bring him along the journey with them. Timothy was a, a student that was 
had, had come to know the Lord during Barnabas and Paul's first missionary journey through this area. And he's grown and he's gotten to know the word. And now they want Paul and Silas want to take him on this missionary journey with him. But it says that Timothy's mother was Jewish and his father was a Greek. And I'll be honest with you, friends, that wouldn't make it very easy for someone to go and to share the gospel in a Jewish place. Most scholars believe that Timothy was 16 to 18 years old by this time. Again, he was saved under the, the previous ministry of Paul and Barnabas when they had gone to Lystra the first time. And then Timothy had been taught the scripture by his mother and his grandfather. Many scholars believe that it was at the denouncement of his father. Many scholars believe that his father probably did not like the fact or protested the fact that his mother and his grandmother taught him the scriptures. Friends, you have family that's tugging you one way or the other. You have family that may not have a relationship with Christ and they don't understand why you do the things that you do. They don't understand why you make the decisions that you make. Sometimes they can be obstacles that stand in our way. But I want to encourage you to not forget that Jesus said that you have to choose between him and family. I hope you've never had to make that choice, but if you do, I hope you make the correct choice. And while it may not be easy, it'll be the right choice every time, and the reward will be great for what God is going to do in your life. But let's be honest, we all have that family that's tugging even I have family that doesn't have a relationship with the Lord and they tug and they don't understand why I do what I do and they don't understand why I stand in this pulpit every day, every Sunday and preach the word of God. They think that it's just fables and myths that we're talking about. But friends, I believe in the written and errant word of God and I believe that it is worthy to be preached and I believe that it is worthy to be taught and I believe that it is worthy to lay my life down for if that's what God has called me to do. It doesn't matter what family says when it comes to the Word of God. We have to follow Jesus. We all have those things in our family that we're not happy about and that burden us. However, we cannot let those things disqualify us for the work of the gospel. We cannot let them disqualify us from the work that God wants to do in us and through us. Again, there's a lot of things that we can't control about our family, and so therefore we must not let it control and influence us into a rut of not doing what God has called us to do. We cannot let it be a, a fact of, of doing what God wants us to do or not doing what God wants us to do. There's a lot of baggage that can come from both immediate family and extended family, and we can let that keep us or we can say that I will not statements. I will not let that keep me from doing what God has called me to do. Friends, where are you at today when it comes to your obstacles? We've seen the obstacle of the fear of past pain. We've seen the obstacle that family can sometimes present. But the third obstacle that I want us to encounter here this morning is the obstacle of ourself, yourself. Sometimes we can stand in the way of what God wants to do. You see, in order for Timothy to be able to minister to the Jewish community, to do what he felt like Paul and Silas wanted him to do, to do what he felt like God wanted him to do, he had to meet their requirements, the requirements that the Jewish people were putting into place. Now, if you remember, there's been many battles about whether or not people had to do something besides just give their life to Jesus. Did they have to be circumcised? Did they have to make sacrifices? Did they have to do the things that the Old Testament law taught or was it enough to have faith in Jesus and the, the the shed blood that he shed on Calvary for them or did they have to do something else and there's been many battles that we've seen throughout the book of Acts on that but we saw here that Timothy understood that in order to to really be able to go and do an effective work for Jesus he probably needed to set aside what his belief was on that I would venture to say that Timothy probably believed that through faith in Jesus, he had a relationship and he was just as good as any Jew that had followed all of the laws. But he knew that in order to be able to effectively teach that he was going to have to go and to follow some of the things of the law. And so Paul and Silas went and they had him circumcised that so he could be all things to all people. What is it that we need to give up? or to change in our own life, to be the child of God that God wants us 
to be. Friends, I don't think it was a very comfortable thing for Timothy to go at age 16 to 18 and to be circumcised. But what I want us to see from this picture is that he saw an obstacle, but because he was completely bought in to what God was doing, he didn't let that obstacle stand in his way. He didn't let that obstacle take over and and control his life. He understood that some of the people would never listen to him if he didn't go and do this act. And so, friends, sometimes we have to put aside the things that we think disqualify us. And we either have to follow through with them or we have to let them go. Some of them are things that we have to physically do. We have to learn God's word. Whether we want to do that or not, we have to spend time in prayer. We have to let God use us and teach us and mold us and shape us. Just like Timothy did, he went and he did what it would require of him in order to be able to go and to preach the gospel. Again, I think it was probably something that caused him much pain. It wasn't easy for him to go and do this. What is it that's holding you back? What is it that you're saying... God could never use me because I'm not good enough in this area. What is it about you that you think God could could be standing in the way of God using you to take the gospel to the nations or to reach your neighbor or to reach your brother or your sister? We talked about family being an obstacle. What is it that you need to set aside in order to let God use you? Because, friends, sometimes we ourselves can be our biggest enemy. We ourselves can be our biggest obstacle in life. So friends, this morning as we prepare to close, I want to ask you, what obstacles are you holding on to? What obstacles are holding you back? There are many things in this life that can become obstacles in our journey. It can be time. We can let money become an obstacle. Well, I don't have the money to I don't have the, the money to go and do what God wants me to do. Friends, I want you to know that God will provide. It can be our we can let our knowledge be an obstacle. We, I don't think that I have enough answers about Jesus. I don't think that I know enough of the, the right things to say. Friends, if you'll allow Jesus to work in you, He'll teach you those things. He'll make you aware of those things. Maybe it's your past history. Maybe it's your past pains. Friends, I think this is probably one of the biggest areas that the church is missing out on is dealing with our past. We just want to sweep it under the rug and never deal with it. But friends, we must deal with our past and not let it become an obstacle that keeps us from doing the work that God has called us to do. Maybe it's past sin. Maybe again, it's your family or even yourself that can stand in the way. But I want to encourage you this morning to be like Paul and to be like Silas and to be like Timothy and be willing to not let those obstacles stand in the way. Not, don't let those faults, those shortcomings keep you from doing the work that God has called you to do and keep you from working on the call that God has placed on your life. Would you join me as we pray this morning? God, we thank you so much for today. And I thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to study your word for a few minutes this morning. God, I thank you for the example that was made here. God, we always find ourselves fearful of stuff that's happened in our past. But God, I pray that we would take the example of Paul Lord, I don't know anyone in this room that's been beaten to near death and left for dead for the cause of your name. But Lord, Paul was, and he didn't let that stop him from going back to where you had called him to go. Lord, help us to take our past pain and let it mold us and shape us into the people that you want us to be. Let it be an influence for others who may be dealing with those same pains, God. Let us walk the journey with them, God. Help us to come alongside them and understand their hurts, understand their struggles, so that we can walk the road with them. God, maybe it is our family that's holding us back. We don't want to make decisions because we don't want to let our family down. 
God, I'd venture to say that letting you down is far greater in eternity than letting our families down. And so, God, whatever it is that you're calling us to do, help us to not let our families be what stands in the way. But then, God, probably the the most influential obstacle that we can encounter in life is the obstacle of ourself, God. Not wanting to let go of the things that we control for the sake of the gospel. So, Lord, I pray that you would help us to do that. Help us to set aside the things that we hold on to, that we hold dear, and not let them interfere with what you're calling us to do in this life, God. Help us to set aside these obstacles, these and many others that we encounter, God. Thank you for the example that we see in Scripture today of people who didn't let obstacles stand in their way, God, and help us to live by that same example. Maybe you're here today and you'd say, well, I've got a lot of obstacles in my life and I need help overcoming them. This altar will be open. I'd love to pray with you if that's where you are. Maybe you're here today and you say, well, the biggest obstacle I have is that I don't even have a relationship with Jesus. Friends, I beg you to not walk out this door the same way you came in. God, find, help, help us find those obstacles that keep us from you. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, well, you know, it's time that I unite with Mount Pisgah Baptist Church and the mission that God's called them to and strengthening relationships with God, His church, and the world around. And you want to come and be a part of the Covenant Fellowship here at Mount Pisgah. I would encourage you to come, and I'd love to talk to you about next steps with that. But again, I pray that you not walk out of this room the same way that you walked in today. If God's calling you to make change in your life, I pray that today would be the day that you do that. God, thank you so much again for your word. Thank you for allowing us to hear from it, God. Thank you for speaking to us. God, teach us, shape us, mold us for your name's sake, God. It's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray.